For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. also important to mention that there is a third vaccine in the pipeline which is Mambisa uh, which is intranasal so uh, as uh, every anybody who's worked in health knows that uh, uh, this in itself is uh, uh, quite exciting because uh, uh, intranasal is easy to give you just have to put drops in the nose uh, so wherever you have a, a lack of health workforce or the shortage of uh, health workforce uh, there also you can administer this uh, particular vaccine easily you can go for door-to-door -door vaccination with that uh, you can give it basically in low resource settings uh, so though that is uh, still in the initial stages of clinical trials uh, but that is another uh, very promising candidate that has come from Cuba uh, there are five vaccine candidates with Cuba and they all have uh, their own importance um, and coming from the global south uh, uh, this is an achievement, a big achievement that Cuba has. understand is the context in which Cuba has produced these vaccines. Firstly, it is facing US blockade since 1962. And what does the blockade mean in practical terms? It means that you are not able to trade with other countries easily because US blocks it. Uh, and even if you trade, you get all that material at very, very expensive rates. So which means Cuba finds it really difficult to get a state of the art technologies from other countries when where they have been developed uh, or uh, uh, reagents, good quality, raw material and everything. Within that context, Cuba has been able to produce five vaccines which have their own different uh, advantages within 18 months of the pandemic. Uh, it, this achievement has to be seen in this context completely. Uh, but then also the question is how it has been able to do it because no other country, no other country has this, uh, achieved this feat. And that is because of the very way Cuba does its uh, science or goes for its scientific discoveries, which is a very collaborative way of working. Uh, uh, the, uh, the vaccines have been uh, developed by two institutes, uh, CIGP and Finlay Institute uh, in Cuba. Mm, so the scientists uh, from both the institutes have always been in communication with each other. They had a weekly meetings. Every week they were sharing information. Uh, and what that meant was that if you have a stumbling block and one of the scientists or the institutes, if they have been able to overcome it, the other institute does not have to go through the entire process if they face the same challenge. Now, this may sound like a very obvious thing to do, that that's how you need to work but that does not happen in the capitalist world and uh, if you look at us which is just 90 nautical miles from cuba the kind of competitive way in which their institutes work the private sector especially but also their uh, public sector uh, uh, there the idea is that you compete with each other and therefore you keep all your scientific success and discoveries uh, secret and therefore you don't learn from each other and uh, therefore, we see that uh, using the protein subunit technology, Cuba's vaccines are among the first that have hit the market. The uh, other private companies, uh, uh, which are in 
competition are Novavax and Sanofi and all. Uh, it is only Novavax which has reached phase three trials and uh, release data just a few days before Cuba. So despite spending so much of money, they could reach only there, whereas Cuba has been able to do such fantastic work. And that is, and they have five vaccines. Novavax has one, so let us not forget that. Um, and uh, they have been able to do it with their idea of collaboration. And then collaboration does not end only at uh, producing and finally coming up with these vaccines. Uh, because uh, collaborative research uh, by its very nature is anti-monopolistic, right? There's many institutes involved, there are many people involved, there is government involved. Um, so when you do that, you are not asking for monopoly rights over these vaccines. Uh, compared to, again, if we look at the US, uh, look at Pfizer's vaccine or Johnson & Johnson's vaccine. So Pfizer vaccine should have been called American vaccine, right? Because it was uh, the initial discovery came in the public institutes of America, but no, because the uh, monopoly rights are with the company. So it went on to become a, a company's uh, property uh, and is not accessible to everyone. Where, which the, and that is the monopoly right that Cuba's very way of doing science breaks. Um, and uh, therefore we are seeing there is so much of excitement in the global south. Just last week, uh, Progressive International had this uh, summit on vaccine internationalism. Um, which was attended by a lot of countries, governments, Argentina, Mexico, Cuba, of course, Bolivia, um, and um, uh, Indian state of Kerala was a part of it. Kenya's one province, uh, Kisumu, was a part of it. Uh, and uh, all these countries have come together to, en uh, to ensure that they have access to vaccines, which they have been denied. Just if we look at the data from our uh, world in data, till uh, June 22, 53% of United States was vaccinated with at least one shot of one of the COVID vaccines. European Union, 47%. African continent, 2.7%. DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, which is, uh, which has one of the best, uh, I mean, which has a lot of natural resources uh, and a country full of uh, uh, other kinds of resources, had 0.05% of its population vaccinated with one dose. So this is the inequality we are talking about. Uh, and uh, therefore, the countries in the South did realize that they have to come together to do something. Uh, uh, and uh, and they, basically, they have to have their own vaccines and they have to vaccinate their own uh, people. The North has completely failed them. Uh, in that context, a summit happened and it could, there was, and it could take place and there are things that they are trying to do and that is because there are vaccines and the, the Cuban vaccines of course and Mexico has also one vaccine candidate. Um, so, so that's really good. Cuba is in one sense leading uh, the global south uh, and somewhere fighting against vaccine inequity that we see. Uh, so it's a fight against capitalism uh, in short. Thank you.